Hey, what's up guys? I am so excited to share this video with you. I spent some time with my buddy Ceridius in a private match where we talked about all different kinds of things that can help you grow as a player in Destiny 2. Whether you're a brand new player or you're already pretty experienced, I think these tips may help you to propel yourself to that next level of gameplay. If you're the type of player who's played a little bit of Trials but maybe you don't have your first flawless ticket yet, or maybe you've been playing that competitive survival mode but you haven't yet made it to 5500, hopefully some of these tips might help you get there. I really appreciate Ceridius taking some time out of his day to come hang out with us and share his knowledge, and it would mean a lot to me if you go over to his channel, subscribe if you haven't yet, and leave a comment on his latest video letting him know that you really liked this video. So, uh, Jimmy, <laughs> let's uh, hand it over to you. Uh, one of the questions that we were first wanting to talk about was the big question, how do I get better at Destiny? Which is something that we both hear quite a bit from our YouTube and Twitch and whatnot. With anything in life, practice, 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 right? There's going to be some natural, you know, uh, skill in there based off, you know, the individual's ability to pick up things and hand-eye coordination. So there is there is some individual just natural skill there, but practice, practice, practice. And the best way I would say, like, you know, you can do third-party stuff like uh, Kovacs, Aim Hero, and, and stuff like that, sit there all day, but there's nothing better than actually practicing in the game. So what I always recommend is literally go in a 1v1 with one of your friends and just kill each other for three hours, you know, 100 uh, score, 30 minutes, instant respawn. Just kill each other for a long time and practice what you want to practice with. So if you want to practice your hand cannon aim, you want to practice your sniping, you want to practice, you know, your auto rifle tracking, you want to just practice your aim. Like that's the best way to do it in a nice static environment because you're not going to deal with a bunch of BS like stasis, freezing you, having to worry about supers. Uh, having to worry about getting a shotgun when you're simply just trying to practice hand cannon aim and that's really the best way to do it Yeah, I actually totally agree. I used to do that with my friends all the time We actually just did you, one the other yeah, day, you and which I did was it. really fun. Yeah, and um, it's just I feel like when I play PvP lately, it's like you're just, Most of the, the time is spent dodging stasis grenades and abilities and supers and getting chaos reach and stuff and it's like you don't really get that much time to actually practice your aim mm -hmm. but if you do like sit there with a friend and uh you know it's of course you got to go in there with like a good attitude you're not trying to like ego each other necessarily you're just trying to like actually work on you know getting better and uh it's just i don't know it's a very chill relaxing thing to just like you know focus on improving you want to talk about like sensitivity and dpi and all that a little bit yeah that's um absolutely so uh, we, i think we just didn't we just discover the other day we actually are currently playing on the same sensitivity right now kind of funny i'm 412 right yeah and i think I'm, so I'm 806 so. yeah <laughs> it's kind of funny uh but yeah so let me t tell me about your thoughts on like we are, are both mouse and keyboard players right now i i think you used to play controller too right from earlier versions of destiny yes so yeah, and i also did but look, give me your philosophies on aiming with a mouse and um if also controller for any tips you might have for for that as well okay so originally i was a controller player all my life you know way back mm -hmm. from sega nintendo playstation one all the way up to the xbox one eventually i did switch to pc when destiny 2 was on pc and uh, I played the first month or so, or the first year of Destiny 2 on PC with the controller. And I did, you know, just fine and all that. But eventually, I finally switched. And, you know, after switching I and playing, you know, a few years now, I, I wish I would have switched, you know, 10 years ago. Played on computer. And, mm -hmm. But, so for the most part, there's going to be a lot of new people switching to keyboard and mouse. And... You kind of, you know, it gets kind of new. You don't know what's, what DPI, what sensitivity to do. Um, so, you know, you, you're going to, like, you Google it, and you're thinking, well, you know, CSGO has, you know, super good aimers. You want to go copy some CSGO gamer, like Shroud or something. They're old, his old stuff. You know, typical CSGO um, settings, they're going to be quite a bit uh, lower overall EDPI. Because in that game, there's not a whole lot of movements. Not not nearly as much as like Destiny or Call of Duty. Me, personally, over time, that's what I did. I started at like 400, at like 6 sensitivity. And that's why some of you have seen me in the past with this really, really small split keyboard because I needed an extra space. But with a game like Destiny where you need so much more room, you know, shotgunning my shoulder eventually started hurting, so I, I raised it up and slowly raise it up over the years and now i'm at 400 at 12 
and honestly like this feels like such a sweet spot for me and i've like my flicks and stuff have you know never felt better so yeah that's awesome uh, would, one thing i want to mention like just for people who might not know what edpi is that's when so when you're if you're new to mouse and keyboard you have your in-game sensitivity is one number like for example mine right now is at six uh jimmy's is at 12. But then you also have your mouse has a DPI button. And the thing is, if you don't know what your mouse's DPI is, your actual feeling of how the sensitivity in the game feels is going to be completely different from one mouse to another or what setting you happen to have on your mouse. So the EDPI is basically when you multiply your in-game sensitivity by whatever your DPI is. So uh, we both have the same EDPI, even though our in-game sensitivity is different, because if you multiply our in-game sense by our mouse, it works out to be the same number. Um, but a lot of people don't like, you know, they, they get their, their new gaming mouse and they, the, oh, it goes up to 20,000 DPI on the box. So they crank it up to like the highest number, <laughs> you know? So it's like, if your uh, your sensitivity doesn't matter by itself as much as the combination of whatever sensitivity you have, um, in combination with the DPI that you choose to use on the mouse. Yeah. And honestly, like I always, at this point. Um, I always say just just for a nice base, go find your favorite streamer or, or uh, Destiny player, and you know, kind of use their stuff as a baseline. But I've also like, if you are hitting your shots and you're doing just fine at twenty thousand DPI, you know, you're, who am I to tell you you're wrong? So there's there's that. But again, like I said, a good baseline for new, go copy um, someone yeah. you know who's a, a streamer who you like or something. I think that's really good advice. It's funny. I actually came from playing Counter-Strike when I was a lot younger and I played, you know, pretty high level for a long time. And so I was kind of held Counter-Strike pro players as like the greatest aimers ever, mm -hmm. which of course, like, you know, the top ones are insane at aiming. But um, I, one thing I didn't really like account for when I got into more games like Destiny and Apex and different things that have a lot more movement is just how much more you are moving your mouse <laughs> compared to Counter-Strike. Yes. And so it's like, I, I kind of always thought, you know, the lower your sensitivity, the better, because like you can be more accurate, like, you know, because you have more room to move the mouse around to make a small, you know, a smaller uh, movement. So it allows you theoretically to be more precise. But like the thing is in a game like Destiny where you're moving so fast, I've actually kind of like gone the other way and I find myself continuously raising my sensitivity little by little. Um, and I'm kind of, I feel like my reactivity is a little bit better when I inch it up higher and higher because I can react better with like a shotgun or, you know, if people are behind me and need to make a quick adjustment. But one thing I will say about that is that pretty much any top player that you come across on like YouTube or Twitch or wherever, that's going to be usually a lot higher than they're playing. Like the highest I know of is, and I think wall is like pretty high up there. And even him compared to like the starting destiny sensitivity is like, way lower so it's just something to keep in mind if you're a brand new player moving to keyboard and mouse you might want to kind of find a good starting place just uh and kind of you know figure out your sweet spot from there same thing with keybinds honestly just copy copy somebody mm -hmm. get it started yeah absolutely uh and then for me one thing that helps a lot is i, I tend to try to keep my keybinds uh similar across every game, every game I play, yeah. so i don't have to like relearn it right so it's like if I play Destiny, I play Apex, I play Warzone, play Counter Strike, whatever. Like I try to keep mine relatively the same, so that I don't have to go relearn them every time I switch games. And it it kind of builds that muscle memory of like, if I press this button, I heal. If I press this button, I dodge or whatever. Um, you know, pull your weapons out, etc. So that's something that I try to do is I, I try to match them as closely as I can from game to game, so I minimize how much like relearning I have to do each time I switch games. Um, another thing I wanted to kind of talk about record your gameplay so you can record your gameplay and you can kind of go back and see go back and watch it and see if you are actually under aiming or over aiming and you can kind of adjust your sense and stuff from there and also it'll help you kind of see how you died like most mm -hmm. of the time honestly people are like what the frick this game sucks he one shot me with this when it's in reality you peaked with your health not fully regen and you were easily you were actually one shot that's been catching me off guard a lot lately with 120s being the meta because i think it i used to get away with peaking at not full health a lot more because like you'd you'd still be able to tank two shots and now with 120s being so strong i think when i peak like just a little earlier than i should yeah 
that's it's enough of a difference that that like 90 damage headshot instead of like a you know 68 or whatever mm -hmm. is like the difference between like you know being still being able to take two shots versus just one and I, I find myself dying more often from peaking too early than i used to and then i think you mentioned about controllers really the only recommendation i have there is if you don't play claw already i would definitely recommend an aftermarket controller whether it's the elite scuff or whatever but those paddles on a controller again if you don't play claw are honestly like a game changer mm -hmm. i remember back in destiny 1 when trials came out um with the whole revive system i would have to uh <laughs> what i would do is i would move my since i didn't play claw i would move my left thumb over to x to revive that way i could still mm -hmm. aim i couldn't move but i could <laughs> aim yeah. and like i said once i got the elite controller you know that kind of that whole that changed now this can kind of translate to keyboard and mouse if you if you have your key binds simply set to let's see where is it at your interact if you have it simply set to just f that can work for the most part but if you're not able to kind of you know move your fingers around weird and you take your index finger off to hit f you can't you can't strafe right unless like i said unless you can move your middle mm -hmm. finger to d which is a little unnatural for the most part for me and probably a lot of people it's uh it's it's tough to be able to revive shoot, and move at the same time so if you go into your settings you can have uh two sets of key bindings for the same key so i have f to interact just because it's natural to like go to a, an npc or pick mm -hmm. up heavy i don't pick up heavy but uh, go to NPC and, or your bank and press F. But during the game, um, when you have to revive somebody, I have it bound to left alt as well because it's real simple just to move my thumb over and hit left alt and hold it while being able to WASD perfectly fine and do everything as normal. Yep. I actually do the same thing. I have my E, uh, e as my interact for like just talking to NPCs and going, you know, looting or whatever, because I use that for pretty much every other game. Mm -hmm. um, but I do left alt for like if I want to revive someone or if I want to pull heavy so you can still be moving without, um, you know, having to lose that yes. <laughs> one direction because you're holding a button. And it actually is like, it, it's, it's it huge. saves you so many times. It's, it's one of those little tricks that I think a lot of good players do things like that. And, <laughs> New but, players just have no idea. Whenever I see people, whenever like I used to do carries or I'm helping a friend help somebody in trials and like the, the person we're helping is reviving and they're sitting there standing completely still in my body, <laughs> reviving while getting shot at, not shooting back. I'm like, I'm like, what's your, what's your key bind? Like, oh, yeah. it's just F. I'm like, hey, let me recommend this that we can function normal, you know? So yeah, it, it's a huge thing. It, like a lot of people don't realize. Yeah, it's a thing a lot of people overlook. Uh, speaking of movement things, what are the biggest movement mistakes that you see from like, newer players when they're trying to become better like what kinds of tips do you tend to give people there's movement is a huge skill thing itself and i'm sure myself or myself and i'm sure a lot of other people who are you know good players you can immediately tell who's going to be the sweaty player in a quick play lobby or any other lobby you can immediately tell who's going to be a sweaty player based off their movement pretty quickly if uh when you're shooting somebody and they, you know you hit them two times and they just boom 180 slide out of there you know, they're, it's, it's it's something pretty simple, but for the most part, you can tell with the reaction time they're going to be a pretty, you know, sweaty player versus, you know, someone who just kind of casually walks out or who re-peaks again with no health. Mm -hmm. So movement is uh, just right away I can tell who, who I can bully and uh, who's going to be a better player, so who to be even more yeah. careful with. A big thing um, for quick play, I, I have a trouble doing this myself, and if you do this, it will definitely help you rack up more of uh, those chain kill medals like a Slayer, Lights Out, triple, even triple kills. And that is that is your positioning when you face a group of uh, it, when you face a group of people. So Patty standing out there, um, a lot of people kind of just slide out. So if there's like a so the best way to kind of approach this if you're trying to get these chain kills is if you come out, come out, come out a little more, like right there. Mm -hmm. So Patty's right there. Say there's an enemy where I'm shooting, a couple more enemies. If you're able to position yourself, think you to th this is a separate thing you have to think about, but it'll also become natural. You can position yourself to be able to shoot um, your first target without being in the line of sight of your other two targets. You'll be able to get a cleaner 1v1, and then you'll be able to, you know, you basically want to cut off your line of sight from other enemies that way you can get more clean 1v1s and not get team shot and be able to 
potentially get the higher uh, uh, kill medals, chain kill medals. Mm -hmm. So that's an important that thing with positioning, and a lot of people will slide out, and then like you, you're you're too far out. Yeah, that's a. It's like one of the biggest things I think that um, good players do instinctively after developing that habit that newer players don't quite understand yet is that. In general, in FPS games, your goal is to turn 1vx situations, meaning like a 1v3, 1v4, where like you're by yourself and you see multiple targets, into a series of 1v1 fights, where you're only isolating the one angle at a time where you can win that fight, and then you you know open up your angle a little bit more to take the next guy, and then the next guy, and the next guy. So what, what that does is that it minimizes the amount of incoming damage that's going against you, and you know maximizes your chance that you'll have just a clean 1v1 fight that you can win and then, you know, open it up. If you manage your angles really wisely, that's a huge, huge thing to becoming better at the game. You always want to be able to have an escape route or something too, especially especially for sniping. You always want to be able to position yourself near an escape or near cover. And pretty much, if you take that first shot at them and you miss, you're, you're going to want to get back into cover. And if you mm -hmm. slide out and you have no escape route, it's just no bueno. Like, there's certain places you want to fight, like... Definitely right here where I'm standing. This is a pretty pretty terrible place to be pretty terrible place to fight because I, I have nowhere to go I can slide right here behind this pillar, but this is like you're 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 such an easy You, you get grenaded or something. There's no cover. So this is a terrible place to stand a better place to the fight of course is back here a little bit because you can Use this box and you know you turn left and you're back in a cover So you don't want to get caught fighting right here. You want to Almost like move cover to cover. These boxes, again, not the greatest, but they're for the most part. There's not a whole lot of cover over here. You want to build a fight here and not not just don't get stuck out in the open. That's the worst thing. You always want to mm -hmm. position yourself near cover. Um, what about uh, when it comes to like aerial movement, like jumping and stuff? Like I think uh, one thing I notice a lot is that when players get new to the or new to the game, they'll first of all they'll be usually very grounded when they're like brand new players because they're just not really comfortable with the idea of like jumping and shooting and all that coordinating it. Mm -hmm. But then there's like a point where people start to like realize, oh, I can like use my aerial play, and then they'll like be jumping too much where they're like <laughs> like always sitting ducks up in the air with like because like for the most part once you jump, you're sort of like on a set trajectory. Like yes. you can adjust it, but like a good player will it will be able to like figure out the trajectory of where you're moving and track that and kill you before you hit the ground. Basically, you don't really want to enter, you don't want to enter a fight in the air. So if I'm just flying through the air like this, especially as a Titan, like there's not much I could do. He probably would just easily like free tap me for the most part. Titans and Warlocks, I mean, you can't, you can't really like jump during a gunfight. I mean, you might be able to throw in a, a little jump, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, Hunters, you can definitely, like, jump to the right and then double jump back to the left when you're in the middle of a gunfight. And that's that's typically when you probably want to um, jump in a gunfight. You don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to jump into a gunfight, but you want to be able to jump while you're in the gunfight, like halfway through as a, as a, mm -hmm. you know, a different form of i guess strafe and just you know survivability like jumping is a great tool and it can it's a one of the things that separates like you know decent players from great players but well, i think a lot of it is like knowing it, when to use your jump yeah it can help you or it can hurt you basically exactly yep yeah. so a lot of times when you're you're in a gunfight maybe like from this distance your hand cannon your secondary is a shotgun a lot of times you you're very tempted to you know, finish the fight, but maybe you're. It's gonna take five or six bullets to kill them with the hand cannon or you know the scout rifle. A lot of good. A lot of times, you really just hit them once, and then you pull out your shotgun, and slide towards them, and you can, with that amount of damage you do, you can. Well, that wasn't a map right there, but you can definitely uh, shoot your shotgun from quite a bit farther. So if I'm in a mm. little gunfight right here, you know it's going all right. You can just pull out your shotgun. For a finish and slide in and close the gap, you'll be able to yeah. map them from uh, what's a what's shotgun range max range nine meters yeah, like eight yeah like depending like let's say eight to nine to, I mean eight, nine's pretty far these days I'd say more like eight but it depends um, but like I, what you're saying basically is like okay so your shotgun here let me hit you from like kind of far 
those like I'm hitting damage drop off there, but like even then you see those are those pellets are each doing like nine or ten from that distance. So every time if I hit one body shot, that's fifty damage, right? One headshot's ninety damage. So that's potentially like nine less pellets that would have to hit to make up that amount of damage. So like if you're able to just do a little bit of chip damage with your primary before you go for the shotgun kill, your chances that you're going to get the like quote unquote one hit kill shotgun from that distance are like tremendously higher because you have to land a lot less pellets to actually get the kill. Yeah, so a lot like I said, a lot of times you can recognize a lot of when I rec when I'm fighting people, we can recognize minutes. you know a decent player. It's we'll close. we'll be in a gunfight, maybe this much range, and you know you're, you're a little stubborn. You don't you don't want to pull out your shotgun, but you hit one or two shots, and then you just you pull out your shotgun and go for it. And if you do it before them, you're pretty much guaranteed to kill. Yep, absolutely. And, and then on the you gotta think of it in the moment. Yeah, on the flip side of that too, the opposite is true too. When when you do shotgun someone, like let's say I, I get him like one hit here, um, and he starts to run away, while his health's recovering, you can hit here. I'll try to demo it a little better. I can like start to run away a little bit. You want me to run away? Yeah, 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 run away just a little bit. So see his health's recovering. I hit. Oh, I didn't mean to kill you, but the point is, I, I, you can stop their health recovery by tagging them with just a little bit more damage with a shotgun. So it's like you don't even have to necessarily get the kill, but yeah, the fact that you put that a little bit of additional damage in while their health's recovering basically resets their health recovery, so that all of a sudden um, they have you know quite a bit long. They have to basically wait the full duration for their health to start recovering again. So that can often help you clean up someone who's like almost dead and you, know, you don't have to necessarily kill him with yeah. a shotgun but i do you that can a just... lot yeah yeah it's it's, a, it's a habit you'll see good players doing frequently your shotgun's already out just go ahead and take the time to t to you know shoot the pellet even if you, even if you hit mm -hmm. one or get one in immune it's going to stop them from regening and then you yep it, it's already out it's not it it's not any uh slower to just i don't know why isn't it shooting that's weird. It's not any. Sh it's not any slower to just go ahead and um, just put it away. Like it, it, it it's it's a second, and it, and it helps out. Yep, absolutely. So, snipers, snipers on your team. A sniper on your team is either gonna really help you, to help you or really hurt you. Your if you, if you're the sniper on your team, and uh, you're. You're not hitting any of your shots. You're not. You're not helping your team at all. Like literally, uh, there's a, there's moments where if you would have just shot your hand cannon at the enemy versus trying to you know hit a body or a headshot, and you just mm -hmm. hit one headshot with your hand cannon, your teammate would have finished off and got the kill. There's 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 times to snipe and there's times not to snipe. And mo majority of the time, it's time to put it away, pull out your hand cannon and team shot. Help your help your teammate out because. If you got your sniper out and you're sitting there trying to shoot a dude, you're standing in the open, he, you're trying to shoot him through flinch with your sniper, like you're literally doing nothing. You're just, he's getting a free kill. It's like sniping is rewarding when you get good with it. It's super fun and you know, it's, I've loved sniping in every game I play, but the, the reality is in Destiny, especially in like 3v3 scenarios, you're just almost always better off using like a primary and a shotgun and just team shotting like running around together like a tight little group as opposed to splitting off and trying to get snipes unless you're starting to hit like you have to be a pretty advanced player to like get to the point where you're actually contributing more than you would be with a primary and a shotgun and a lot of times you know you can use a sniper the whole time but it's probably because honestly your your enemies aren't that good but when you do face actually face that good team you know you're two games away from the lighthouse and you're you know you're sitting there you're doing good with your sniper two games ago game ago like, yeah, you're all confident and stuff. It's probably because they weren't that good of players. When you actually face good players, you know, you know the peep, the teams that I majority lose to in trials, it's three players who push with their primaries. Yep. Not people who are, you know, hitting crazy shots with snipers and stuff. It's three good players pushing with their primary. That's that's the strongest, you know, that's the strongest uh, team play. It's so hard to play against. And, you know, it's like if you're... Like if you're trying to do like a carry and you're playing against teams like that, it just it feels like such an uphill battle when you're basically playing like a one v three all the time. Yeah, it's uh you know it's just it truly is like the way to win games in Destiny. And then another thing to talk about is uh, flanking in Trials in Destiny is not really super effective in my opinion. I it, it's gonna work again against 
lesser players. You're going to be able to flank, but there's a giant radar tracker. Um, you, you're not going to sneak up on them and stuff. If you're, like I said, we, you know, you can win your first five games flanking all that, but it, all it takes is, you know, one good team to make you lose your mercy or make you, you know, put a loss in your card. And mm -hmm. a lot of times you're flanking, you know, and then you face that good team, they're just going to turn around and kill you. Flanks aren't really crazy effective against better of players. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's like the thing, you know, like you have to like know the rules before you can break the rules type of thing. You're like going you're, for a five <laughs> second flank and like yeah. that's too that's too long. Mm -hmm. They're just going to look in your direction. It's not really a flank then. It's just, oh, I'm trying to 1v3. <laughs> yeah. Well, and actually another point to like add on to that that I think is pretty good advice is when you do, uh, let's say you're playing a team that's like, has one player who seems particularly good if you're playing something like trials when it's uh you know elim and you happen to kill that player do everything in your power to not give up that res so that you don't you know because like a lot of times what will happen is like a good player maybe who does push like more aggressively or something and you can pick that person and it's like i can't tell you how many times i've won rounds where you know, the person who had a super who could have won the round like he got a little too aggressive and we picked him off when you if you can just do everything in your power to not let that person get revived that is a huge thing for your team yeah so there's there's textbook trials playing basically you know the textbook stuff like we're talking about like pushing as a team but like he was just talking about you know holding down enemy reses as as a team really like it's, it's it might be a little boring but it, it is it's you just stay there. You don't. You, there's no need to push. You're down an enemy, or they're down an enemy. You're all three around that area. There's there's no need to push. You decide to probably push out because whenever you're down a guy or you're one v three, like I said, like we, we talked about earlier, their your goal is to their goal is to separate you from one v ones. But you got a downed enemy. There's no need to push. You three are building super, whereas only two of them are building super. Even even when it comes down to it, there's if there's one guy left. There's no need to push him. You, you just get control of the orbs, and as the timer goes on, you're building super and three supers. They got one guy building one super, and he he wants you to push him one at a time. But if you just stay there and you don't, you're you're gonna. Like I said it's, it might be a little boring, it might be a little slow, but maybe you want to do it one or two games, and it's it's really the way you want to do it. Like a lot of times, and then, if that happens when you're the guy who's solo. You got to make a play quick. Like there's, you're you're wasting time. If you're not, if you're if you if you're not making a play, you're just running around constantly. You know, you peek, and you should get in a gunfight. But they're all three there, and then you run back and cover after you get shot immediately, and you're just nothing's happening. Just that's why you see a lot of people jump off the map because it's 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 the smartest thing to do is just to end it quickly to stop the super mm -hmm. super build. I mean, at the end of the day, with like roughly equally skilled teams, the one who has the better super economy ends up often winning the game and you can, i mean how many times have you seen like teams be up like three to one or something or, and then all of a sudden like they start letting the other team build supers and there's a big yeah. comeback because it's, always, it's a really snowballing mode i always tell my 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 guys i'm running with i'm like one v three just you know make a play or die mm -hmm. they just run in there and try and do it try and you know one v three in the in the midst of you know chaos and no cover and all that stuff and maybe you can make a play but for the most part just don't prolong it. Go out, go out with the fight. I, I don't recommend yeah. it with the map. I would say just go in and go with the fight. Yeah, I agree. I think you learn a lot from like trying to go win a Have fight. A little bit I, of pride. I think it's yeah, it's worth <laughs> it. I think. And then I guess uh, moving on, another super important thing in trials is uh, revives. Mm -hmm. It's uh, always try and play a revive, um, shield it, revive or. This imp the important thing we we're talking about earlier: revive and shoot. That's that's what we're talking about. Those keybinds. You want to definitely revive and shoot at the same time. Another thing too is, you know, if you're reviving, you're taking damage. You're not going to be able to um, revive them because it kind of staggers the timer. So mm -hmm. if there's an orb like right here, you can. You don't need to stand right on top of it to res. All you gotta do just make sure you. Like, they might get killed, but at least you give them a chance. You're increasing your chances. Another thing on the uh, the the other enemies team who's watching them get revived, it's not like Destiny One where there was a um, immunity when you when you get revived where you had to like kind of wait for them to stand back up before you can shoot them. Right here in Destiny Two, right when they are revived, boom! You can right when their character just model appears, you can snipe them in the head and they'll die. There's no mm -hmm. immunity timer. 
I used to, so when I when I one v one people, I call this technique the uh, ring around the rosy. And, uh, <laughs> it's being able to really read your radar. So mm -hmm. I, I need you to come over here for an example. Okay. So say you're in a one v three or two v one, and you know you kill one guy, but you hurt, and you really need to just be able to run away from this guy. So, what I want you to do, Patty, is I want you to, like, no jumping, no sliding, whatever. Just try and punch me. I'm gonna try and punch me. <laughs> and you can switch directions and stuff. But oh, okay. yeah. this is like <laughs> this is this is the goal. Like, being able to read your radar, listen to the their footsteps. Be able to know when to turn and keep him as far away as possible. You know, and typically a fight doesn't go on this long, so. <laughs> this is a game yeah. game. <laughs> All right, so so you so you try it. Try the ring run yeah. You start at the end, and I'm gonna try and punch you. Yeah. You ready? Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, so you you got it. You got it pretty well for the most part. But you'll be surprised yeah. whenever I, whenever I one v one, like you know, I one v one some people from my chat, and you know, I've done this a lot of times with them. Like, I'll be able to punch them, you know, pretty quickly because they're not able to read their radar and just yeah. know exactly where the enemy is at. Like this tracker, like it's, it's it's it tells you exactly where people at. So. It's such a power. The radar in Destiny is insane. It it gives you so much information. It's really, really powerful. All you really gotta do is be able to survive for, you know, four or five seconds for your health to be able to regen some, and then yep. you can, you know, start fighting again. Absolutely. Cool. I, I like it. I feel like we covered a lot of uh, good good ground there. Uh, where can people find you online if they want to watch more of your content and come say hi? Yeah, so... Everything for me is my name, Sridius. That's all cool. my social media, Twitch, YouTube, Flash Sridius. Cool. Well, thank you, dude, so much for coming to talk with everybody. This has been really fun. I'm sure yeah, no people are going to get a lot of value out of it. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> wow, hope you really enjoyed that one. It was so fun talking to Jimmy. If you haven't yet, please be sure to go over to his channel and subscribe, and make sure you leave a comment letting him know that you thought this was really cool. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please be sure to go do that, and also hit that like button to make sure that other people can find the video. I stream every week over on Twitch. You can catch me live at twitch.tv slash pattycakespc. It's a great place to come ask some questions and hang out with our community. We also have a fantastic community Discord server. The link to join is discord.gg slash pattycakes. That's all for now. Catch you guys next time.